Hey guys, welcome to Blonity. First little disclaimer, this is not financial advice, my own opinion and estimates. My estimates could be completely wrong. Don't trust, always verify, understand the numbers, be aware of scammers and you know the best how to invest your money. Please be aware that I'm invested in Mara, Riot, Hive Blockchain, Argo Blockchain, Bitfarm, Sat8, K1, DMG, Digihost, Galaxy, Sphere 3D, um, Luxfolio, Blue Sky Digital Assets and Tokens.com. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Um, not a lot um, happened today. Um, I mean, Bitcoin um, is at 48,800. So we got a little bounce here on this uh, support line here. Also on the four hour RSI, we have seen this bounce here. So the support is holding right now. Um, yeah, I mean, what we need now is a higher high. Uh, above 50,000 to continue this uh, uptrend here. Again, it would not surprise me if we get uh, a bigger correction here because the volume, to be honest, is not big here. Um, yeah, we will see. No one knows for sure. Ethereum also doing good. Uh, the miners are overall in green today. Um, Riot, Mara, a little bit here. Hive. I mean, we need the financials from Hive. Um, we should get them tomorrow. Hopefully, we get it. Um, Bit farms, yeah, one percent here. What? Um, Hot eight is is doing very good recently. Um, yeah, we we broke the the nine thousand the the nine Canadian dollars here um, yesterday, but we got rejected, and yeah, we are forming now this pattern here. So hopefully, we get the breakout here again, five percent here. People are expecting the NVIDIA uh, GPUs, the 10,000 with 1.6 terahash going online in the next few days. And yeah, they will add like 2.5 Bitcoins uh, with the metrics from today uh, per day, 2.5 Bitcoins with very low cost, like less than 3,000 uh, US dollars um, per coin. You know, Bitcoin is at 48,000. So um, that's a mining margin uh, way above 90%. And yeah, that uh, that helps a lot right now, Hot8. Um, yeah, Digihost, uh, not much happening here. DMG since the breakout here, also consolidating sideways here. Yeah, I think we need a push, uh, push from Bitcoin here to, to get the next leg up here for the miners. When we go to the hash rate on the one month here, um, yeah, we, we were going sideways, but uh, yesterday we made a big push to the upside from 120 exahash to 180 exahash, very short term, and then we and we are now back at 120. So that's interesting. That means that a lot of miners are plugged in. Um, they are not going uh, online 24/7, but um, yeah, that's um, I, I mean that's a 60 exahash um, price increase. Um, I don't know why, um, but um, yeah, th the miners are already, already plugged in. So I think um, we can, maybe this indicates that we will go sooner to 200 extra hash that we were all expecting. Yeah, let's wait and see. Um, I hope uh, the hash rate stays low um, for sure because um, that's good for our mining companies. That means low competition. Um, yeah, the, we had a difficulty adjustment today. It's plus 13% here. So a big difficulty adjustment to the upside. And the next one I think is going to be also positive here. Um, you can see, uh, yeah, the, the forecast here, we cannot trust these numbers here right now, but it, I think it's going to be another positive um, adjustment here. So it's going to be more and more difficult to mine Bitcoins. Um, which should be bullish for the price because it makes the network more secure. Um, but for the mining companies, that means more competition. You already know this. When we go to the Ethereum hash rate, um, we already recovered uh, the, the drop here in May. So we can see here on uh, May 20th or so, we were close to 700 Terra hash here. Then we had to drop to 500. And now we are back at 700 Terra hash. I was saying that time that Ethereum hash rate is a lot more distributed globally than Bitcoin hash rate. Uh, we all know now that, uh, or before we we knew that, that the Bitcoin hash rate is like 50-60% is located in China. Um, now China, there was a China shutdown 
and um, the hash rate is, is searching for new locations like North America, for example. And with the Ethereum hash rate, we can see that it was only 20, 30% maybe in China. And yeah, the, all these miners are now uh, finding new locations. So yeah, we already recovered 100% here. I really missed this one here, Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, we know him. He bought additional 3,907 Bitcoins and MicroStrategy holds now close to 109,000 Bitcoins. I think uh, Michael Saylor will buy all the, all the Bitcoins if no other comp corporations uh, will step in and buy. Um, I think in a few years he's going to be the hero. <laughs> um, yeah, um, you know Michael Saylor, he's, he's really a, a Bitcoiner and yeah, that's, that's just insane. More than 100,000 Bitcoins on the balance sheet. He um, privately he owns uh, like twenty thousand bitcoins as I'm and as I'm aware of maybe now he owns more. That was the last number he disclosed. Okay, so um, here is the bitcoin price. You can see this line here. We are rising now close to fifty thousand, and these are the Google trends. Um, so yeah, the Google trends are really flat. And when we go to the all-time chart here. In 2017, the Google Trends were this high and we are now here. So we are way below the attention we had in 2017. And what's interesting, the price is rising and the, the Google Trends are not rising. Also, the volume is not big. So the question is, is this bullish or bearish? You know, I'm a Bitcoin bull. Um, so maybe this indicates that this is shadow buying by institutions. I mean, the public awareness is not really there for Bitcoin. Um, people are talking about other stuff, but not about Bitcoin. And I think uh, the Google Trends, they, they show us here, but the price is rising. Um, so someone is buying definitely. So yeah, maybe this is shadow buying by institutions and yeah, they are preparing for the big leg up we could see at the end of this year. We will see, no one knows for sure. Okay, um, let's check a little bit the HUD-8 financials here. Um, you know, most of the miners, they, um, they showed us the financials uh, from Q2. So I will show you a little bit um, about this one. I will go more into detail, I think on Patreon. But uh, yeah, let's give you a little overview here. So uh, for HUD-8, the assets at um, end of June were yeah, nice assets here. This is Canadian dollars, by the way. So if you want to have it in US dollars, you have to multiply it with 0 0.8 um, approximately. Um, yeah, 362 million Canadian dollars here in assets. So that's big. A lot of cash because they diluted the shares. They, they raised a lot of capital um, just before the NASDAQ uplisting. So 92 uh, million uh, Canadian dollars in cash. A lot of um, digital assets um, held in custody or in lending arrangements. They get these 4% on interest uh, for 2000 of Bitcoins. Um, so that's a very interesting for HUD-8, very special. Uh, not a lot of liabilities here. Um, yeah, let's go to the, uh, uh, let's go to the <clears throat> to the financials, I think that was MDNA. Um, S6A5S, we always have these uh, cryptic codes here. <clears throat> yeah, so um, we have the revenue. It's a uh, 33.5 uh, 33 million Canadian dollars here. Um, yeah, it's in US dollars, it's below 30 million. So it could be higher to be honest, but um, the, the hash rate upgrade, uh, the increase in hash rate came after June. So they're installing now new miners and the Nvidia GPUs. So yeah, we expect more revenue in the future. The cost of revenue is okay here. So that's the cost for mining here. The operating cost, like a big part of this is electricity. So it decreased from Q1, Q1 was very high. I think it was 21 million Canadian dollars. That uh, electricity was definitely too high at that time. And now it's below. Um, so it looks a lot better here. And what I really don't like is the G&A, uh, the general and administrative expenses here, 8.6 million. So that's a big increase. 
Um, yeah, I think it's because of the NASDAQ uplisting. They had a lot of professional fees like 2.6 billion Canadian dollars and so on. Um, so hopefully this number decreases in the upcoming quarters. Uh, we don't want to have these uh, big um, administrative expenses and this overhead. Um, so I think for the NASDAQ uplisting it is okay, but um, we should keep a close eye on it. Um, of course, we have this um, revaluation of digital currencies here um, because um, from uh, end of March to end of June, uh, Bitcoin dropped like 30,000 or so, a little bit less than 30,000 US dollars. So that's why the the coins they held, they, they drop a lot and that means a total comprehensive loss here. Um, but on the operating side, they're positive. We can see this here operating income is 8 million, but um, we have this unrealized revaluation and we have um, with all the coins they have another 64 um, revaluation loss here. So that means a big loss here in Q2, a comprehensive loss. But now Bitcoin rises again. So in the next quarter, it should be a big positive again here. So that's not uh, the big issue here. Yes, so um, I mean, they diluted the shares here from approximately 100 million to 143 million here. We had this big capital raise here, but on the other side, uh, HUD 8 is now in a position to build this uh, new facility. This, uh, again, uh, these uh, 100 megawatts in Alberta, so they will have 200 megawatts um, somewhere um, in 2022. Um, they will get a lot of mi new miners and the goal is to have like six exa hash um, operational in uh, mid 2022 so yeah they need a lot of cash i mean uh, bitfarms also has a new atm program um, for they're able to raise 500 million um, us dollars so yeah they the miners they need they need cash for sure okay so um when we go to the assets here from HUD8, we can see that they have a lot of deposits made here for, um, for example, for equipment purchase. So that's uh, the NVIDIA GPUs, for example, or the micro BTs they ordered um, for, for the Bitcoin ASX to mine Bitcoin. And um, yeah, for the power purchase agreement with Validus Power here, um, they already paid 15 million Canadian dollars I think that they built the facility there, these additional 100 megawatts, and HUD-8 will pay only 2.7 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and the first, I think, 35 or 25, 35 megawatts will be online in Q4 2021, so this year. Um, th yeah, they will install one extra hash of micro BT miners there. And in the next year, we will get the other 65, 75 megawatts um, yeah, with with new miners there, and yeah, this is the this is the deposit that, um, they made here, and um, they have this um, 6.2 million here um, deposits for electricity supply here for Medicine Head in Alberta. So they all they always pay a little bit in uh, in front. So yeah, that um, that's uh, that's what they do. Okay, guys, so um, that was a short update today. Um, Bitcoin close to 49,000. Hopefully we can break the 50,000 and move higher. And yeah, it looks not so bad, to be honest. Okay, guys, so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen.